a new operating system scheduling scheme may be coming to a Linux kernel near you with up to two times performance gain. This is a very interesting scheme to be looking at. So this was presented at the Linux Plumbers Conference and is a very interesting scheme for scheduling for the CPU and it involves cores. So let's dive into this a little bit and try understanding how it compares to the CFS scheduler that is used today primarily in the Linux kernel. The idea is to reuse cores that have already been previously tasked with something. And to get a better understanding, let's look at this over here, this little matrix with uh, T standing for, I believe, tasks and just task numbers following the T. So the ones in green are going to be what they consider a primary nest. And then the ones in blue here are going to be a reserve nest. So in the case of the primary nest, these are cores that had been really recently used. So they're considered what would be warm started cores, meaning it's not gonna take much time or power in order to get these to do another computation or task. Whereas the reserve nest have not been used in a while. So they're kind of sitting you know, idle, but they're still warmed up, ready to go. It might take a little extra time since they're not warm started and they haven't recently been used, but they still take less time than the ones over here that haven't been assigned a task and that are not warm started or they're not sitting idly warm. Well, if we imagine that, the whole scheme here is to reutilize the primary nest and the reserve nest well before they are using cores that are sitting there cold which are depicted by the axes that I drew. So that's really the scheme here. And you might be asking, why does that benefit anything? Well, again, latency needs to be considered. You're going to have some latency starting a core. So if you can reuse cores, you have less latency, which gives you better performance results. And the second reason is if something's already started, you don't need to take extra energy to start, which saves energy. And an example is really the amount of power that needs to be taken to start up one of these cold idle cores is less than the ones that have been already running. As far as my understanding goes, the scheme here is to really keep track of what is going on. So from my understanding, using Nest as some form of a scheduling scheme, the idea would be to keep track of these cores and their states. So we would look and see, okay, this set here would be assigned, I don't know, let's call it hot. And then the Ones in blue may be warm, so W, and finally the other ones C for cold, meaning these are hot and ready to go. These are warm and getting ready to go. And then C, cold, you probably don't want to use them because it's going to take a while for them to be ready. Of course, if you're required to use more cores and every other one is active, you're going to have to go into the cold cores. You're never going to be able to optimize it all the way or fully. So now that we understand Nest, make sure to smash that like button for me and let's talk about the actual performance gains in real world situations. Yes, they have some data for us already. All right, here's where some exciting data comes in. This is on a four socket CPU with 128 cores and Intel 6130. So what's being shown to us here is three different types, technically four. I'll put CFS in here as well, because CFS I assume is going to be the baseline here, 0% improvement uh, if you're just using CFS because everything's being tested against that. So we imagine that this line here is uh, CFS. So if anything goes below this line, that means that we have a dip in performance versus anything above that line is an improvement in performance. So anything in blue is CFS, the performance version. Nest schedule is the normal Nest scheduler that is created. And then you have Nest performance. So looking at this, what we realize is across the board, Nest seems to be doing better, at least compared to its counterpart, the CFS performance in the blue. We notice that on all of these, with even with the deviation, so that's that little marker right at the top of these, that it's pretty clear the Nest scheduler beats it in performance. So anywhere from a couple percent down here in this schedule, which is here running Node.js versus some amazing improvement on software, which is M player here has almost a 15% boost in performance by just using the Nest scheduler, which is quite amazing. So across the board, Erlang, FFmpeg, GCC, GDB, Image, Magic, Linux, LV, LLVM, Ninja, LLVM, Unix, 
M player, Node.js, PHP, every single one saw a performance gain by using the proposed Nest scheduler. Now, the performance Nest scheduler didn't actually help too much. If we look, that's kind of this brownish color. It's pretty much on par with some larger deviations on every single one of these software tests, which is interesting that the performance version doesn't necessarily mean a better performance. Anyways, I'm sure there's quite a lot of optimizations that need to be done and more tests, of course, need to be done here in order to really show us how well a Nest scheduler could work for our CPUs and cores versus something that's commonly used today, which is CFS or the completely fair scheduler. I believe CFS has been around pretty much since Linux kernel version, let's see, 2.6 and above which has been around for quite a while. That's like a 2007 release of the Linux kernel, but it'll be very interesting to see what happens with Nest. I know I'll be following along with this and I'm super excited to see more results. So a moment ago, we saw a performance gain, but now let's talk about energy consumption. So in this one, energy consumption, we're looking for an improvement, meaning less energy consumption. This is a little weird how the data is presented here, but we'll go through it anyway. Again, the bottom here is going to be our baseline. So just regular old CFS, I believe. And then we have CS, CFS performance. So we'll say it consumes about 4% less on average energy than its CFS counterpart. Then if we look at Nest, we have upwards of, let's see here, maybe a 15% improvement, meaning 15% less energy consumption in order to run the same tasks inside of M player. Quite fascinating. I mean, a 15% reduction in energy is quite a bit. And some are negligible, like Node.js. I mean, they're all on par with each other. You can see across the board, if I had to guess, around a 5% reduction in energy consumption by using the Nest model. And the conclusion is to use the Nest task scheduler to reuse cores, keep them warm, and the performance impact using Linux version 5.9 is anywhere from a 10% gain to two times, or what I assume is 200% performance boost on light or moderate loads with the one to four socket Intel server. This is using an AMD desktop and an AMD server, and it seems to maintain four performance boosts on full loads and overloads using NAS benchmarks and some Pharonix testing suite software. And then of course, the power managed operating system is also boosted by saving energy. Anyways, a quick thanks to the following people who submitted this data for us to see and are actively working on this Nest scheduler, which was presented in September 12th, 2022 during the Linux Plumbers Conference. Again, I'll make sure to post a link below to these slides so you can check them out yourself. Quite exciting to see this development going on. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.